T-minus 90 seconds in counting. Sound suppression water system has been armed. Three main engines reported ready for ignition. Check now of the solid rocket booster commanding. Forty five seconds in counting, forty five seconds to launch. Standing by for the handoff. And the handoff has occurred. Ground loss sequencer has handed off to Atlantis's onboard computers. 25 seconds. Yes, sir. Sound suppression water system is activated. 15 seconds in count. 10 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, one and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis to assemble the framework for the science laboratories of tomorrow. Houston now controlling. Houston Atlantis, roll program. Roger, roll Atlantis. Atlantis's roll maneuver is complete. The uh, orbiter's in a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 137 by 36 statute mile orbit. All systems in good shape. Engines throttling down as Atlantis prepares to maneuver through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower air atmosphere. Already seven miles away from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of five miles. Houston, Atlantis, go at throttle up. Copy, Houston, go at throttle up. One minute, ten seconds into the flight, the three liquid-fueled engines are back at full throttle. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle boosters and external tank weighed four and a half million pounds. It now has burned half that liftoff weight in propellant. One minute, 30 seconds, all hydraulic systems in good shape. The electricity producing fuel cells also in excellent shape as Atlantis heads downrange, 18 miles from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 18 miles. The next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters, which are burning propellant at a rate of 11,000 pounds per second. SRB separation is confirmed two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Atlantis is traveling 3,000 miles per hour, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 46 miles, altitude 35 miles. Ignition of the twin orbital maneuvering system engines on the tail of the orbiter providing an additional boost toward ascent and heading off toward the International Space Station. Two minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Two-engine tau. Atlantis can reach Zaragoza in Spain in the event of a single-engine failure. However, all three engines are continuing to perform as expected. Hydraulic systems in excellent shape, as are the fuel cells producing the electricity for the vehicle. Three minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis is 97 miles downrange at an altitude of 51 miles, traveling 6,000 miles per hour. 
Views from the external tank uh, camera looking down the vehicle. Very quiet here in Mission Control as the flight control team continues to watch over all systems. Everything uh, continuing to go very smoothly with Atlantis's voyage to the International Space Station. Three minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Atlantis, negative return. Roger, negative return. Atlantis can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure, but all three are continuing to perform well, as are the hydraulic systems and the electricity producing fuel cells. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis is 175 miles downrange from the launch site at an altitude of 62 miles, now traveling 8,000 miles per hour. The twin orbital maneuvering system engines continue to provide an additional boost to Atlantis as it heads toward the International Space Station. That ohms assist uh, should wrap up in the next uh, 15 seconds or so. All continuing to go very smoothly with Atlantis's trip to the International Space Station. On board, uh, Rick Sterko in the forward left seat. Lee Archambault in the uh, forward right seat. Pat Forrester, the flight engineer between them. Steve Swanson serving as mission specialist number one, or number two. Clay Anderson on his way to the International Space Station to replace Sonny Williams. Atlantis, press to ATO. Copy, Houston, press to ATO. Five minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis can reach orbit on two engines now, should one fail. However, all three are still performing as planned. Atlantis, single engine ops three. Copy, single engine ops three. Five minutes, 55 seconds into the flight. Atlantis beginning to roll to a heads-up position, the onboard guidance system putting Atlantis on a trajectory toward the International Space Station. Atlantis, single engine, Zaragoza 104. Copy, single engine, Zaragoza 104. And that call uh, means that Atlantis can reach Zaragoza in Spain on one engine. Press to Miko. Copy, Houston. Press to Miko. And that call uh, indicates Atlantis can reach a safe orbit on two engines now. All three continuing to perform as expected. Your shutdown plan is nominal. You are go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Copy, Houston, nominal shutdown, go for the plus X, go for the pitch. The flow of fuel from the external tank into the three space shuttle main engines is equal to that of draining an average backyard swimming pool in 25 seconds. Atlantis, single engine press, 104. Copy, Houston, single engine press. And that call from Tony Antonelli here in Mission Control indicating Atlantis can reach orbit on one engine now should two fail. All three engines are still performing as expected, approaching seven minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis is traveling 19,000 miles per hour, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 640 miles, altitude 64 miles. Awaiting Atlantis' arrival and with great anticipation is the Expedition 15 crew. Aboard the International Space Station, Commander Fyodor Yurchikin, Flight Engineer Oleg Kotov, and Flight Engineer Sonny Williams, who will come home aboard Atlantis after six months in space. Eight minutes into the flight, the engines are now throttling back to maintain the structural limits on the orbiter as it approaches loads near three times gravity. We're standing by for the main engine cutoff confirmation from the booster officer here in Mission Control.